I would like to start with a question. Uh, how many of you watch cricket? Please raise your hands. How many of you watched the Ashes recently? The Ashes, the England and Australia game. Yeah, well, in cricketing terms, I would say that I've come in as a tail ender to finish it off, right? And uh, that too at a home ground. So, I mean, it's pressure. Yeah, I mean, the pressure is not there, but uh, I need to finish it off with style. Uh, I'm here to. I'm here to tell you a story. Uh, the story might be a bit long, but please bear. Uh, I've been here on this stage as a faculty for a number of times, an umpteenth number of times, for different purposes, for different reasons. But today I stand here in front of you all uh, to share a story. And uh, I have one story and one slide. So since I have one slide, this gets into the pocket. I mean, I do not need to do anything with this. Uh, I tell you a story about a kid. This kid has fought adversities. This kid has been through a lot of changes, and he's made a lot of compromise and become what he is today. Uh, I take you back to 2002. The year is 2002. This kid has just taken his SLC exams. Uh, the results come out. He passes, but uh, he almost flunked in compulsory math. Uh, then he and his parents sit together, they decide. Uh, this kid is being taken to Chandigarh, India, northern India. And then uh, this kid, along with his parents, they reach the school. There, uh, it has a CBSE board. So the CBSE board technically had the physics, chemistry, and math. That was the physical group. They had the physics, chemistry, and bio. That was the biological group. And... Uh, uh, this, this kid, I, I just uh, forgot to mention, this kid wanted to grow up as an automobile engineer. He had, an, he had a total affection for automobiles. Uh, he wanted to, you know, become an automobile engineer to learn more about motors, um, motorcycles, and, and, and cars, and all of that. So, uh, looking at his mark sheet, the principal outrightly denies an admission into the physics, chemistry, and math side of the... So now the physical thing is all gone, right? Then and there, he makes his first major compromise. Where was that? That's a, this side, yeah. Then and there, he makes the first compromise, and he says, I am going to be a makeshift doctor. I am taking up physics, chemistry, biology. I am dropping down my 16, 70 years old dream of becoming an automobile engineer. Well, well and fine. And then uh, he starts well. He starts off quite well. I mean, he is there till late night, 11, 12, 1, at times 2. He stays back. Uh, he sits with his seniors. He's studying. And there's this wonderful friend of his who gives him even a better advice. He tells Nepali, CBSE ro HSEB ma farak chha. CBSE ma last ko, 12th ko board ko, 3 mai na agari, you're burning the midnight oil. HSEB ma, you have 11 or 12 ma, 2 time ma board chha. Here bhai, 11 or ramai lo garne ho, 12 ko last ko 3 mai na padne ho. I quote, that's what this fellow said. And then, this guy, I mean, he is, he has found the main mantra for his life. He shelves all his books. He completely stops studying. And then he starts living his life. That's what he said. That kid, started, that kid starts living his life. He jumps out of a 15 feet wall out of the hostel, goes out, watches movies. He does everything for which the final price has to be paid by this kid again. He again flunks in chemistry, right? This is 2004, so he flunks in chemistry, he comes back, he takes his compartmental exams, he again flunks, I mean the compartmental exams again, he is again ruled out by mere two, two to three marks that is. So this guy has a very good bond with his father, so he and his father are like two best friends. So they keep discussing problems, they keep discussing family problems, issues, 
a future, a career, all that. So his father suggests him that, well, you don't, you know, beat around the bush. You just don't keep hanging around there. Come back. Let's start from the scratch. So this kid is brought back to Kathmandu. Uh, he starts his 11th and 12th. The second innings, he starts as a, as a commerce student. So these two years, he faces a lot of adversities. Uh, we know our community, and then there are a lot of people talking rubbish about him, you know, talking things about him to his parents, that this guy was into drugs when he was in Chandigarh. He was into, you know, all the bad habits that one could even think of. Or what else? Why did he fail? And then uh, this guy went on. He just closed his ears to all of them, had a point to prove, went on, started fighting. And uh, after his 12th, he was again taken to India. He willingly went to India this time around. So he went, he went to Bangalore, India, where he started his bachelor's in business administration, so BBA classes. Uh, he was a mediocre student. He was doing good. Meanwhile, he also got a chance to feature in the college band as a drummer. So now there's a dilemma. He likes the band. He wants to be in the band. But at the back of his head, he is not sure. He's not sure whether he would get the approval from the family, whether the family would, you know, again, uh, welcome him back at the airport or at the railway station, whatever. So he decides to shut down the band chapter, go, go back to Nepal, come back to Nepal, and then starts his new ambition, the American dream. He is dying to go to the United States of America for an MBA. He goes to the best GMAT centers, takes the GMAT exam, does a mediocre score, goes to the American embassy for an F1 visa, is rejected about three to four times. But this guy is so adamant. He's so adamant on getting an American degree that this guy travels back to Delhi. Those days, there was, an, uh, there was a satellite college run by an American university. The university is based in Virginia. So this Virginia university had a satellite campus there in, United, uh, sorry, in India. So he enrolls. His life so far is full of adversities, full of changes, full of compromises. And this does not stop here. MBA, the first year is complete. The second year, he wants to take up uh, marketing and uh, advertising as, as the specialization course. But people around him want to see him grow up as a financial analyst. Look at the word, it's so heavy, financial analyst. Just close your eyes, think of a financial analyst. You would think of a guy who is dapper, you know, uh, in, in an AC room who earns thousands of pounds a month. And then in that pursuit of becoming another financial analyst, he kills the other dream. He goes on to become a pass out. He passes out with a 3.5 plus CGPA. That's a distinction probably. Uh, so there, he is asked to stay back for a job interview. This time, he is quite believing. He is having that sixth sense that, well, this decision might not, you know, this decision might not bombard. So he's waiting. So he's waiting. Uh, just a minute. Uh, thank you. OK. So he's waiting for the bank to arrive. This is a bank, American bank based in Dubai, uh, who's supposed to be coming there. And then it's an, it's an easy walk on the park for him because he's a distinction holder. He's definite to go. Uh, the stipend is at the start is 5,300 dirhams, I believe. So he has that everything calculated. He's going on. But one fine day, he receives a mail from the college stating that, well, the bank is not coming due to XYZ reasons. So now, this guy wants to stay back. This guy has a passion of talking to people. He wants to talk to people, he wants to communicate, he wants to solve their problems, he wants to, well, you know, be a part of solving the problems. He wants to be a source of the happiness. 
he wants to, you know, spread happiness all around. So what he does is he takes a ridiculous step. An MBA graduate with a 3.5 GPA, he starts working at a call center just because he wants to talk to people, just because he does not want to compromise to his dream this time around. So he starts working there. Uh, there's the corporate culture. There's the corporate politics. This guy can't stand there, not even for six months. So finally, he calls his final, the last resort, father. Father says, well, you could come back. We could sit down together. We could discuss. There's nothing, no harm in discussion. We've already discussed a couple of times. I am quite sure you'll do wonders in your life. That's, that's what his father said. And then this guy comes back. Uh, 2013, uh, yeah, 2013, he comes back. He lands in Kathmandu, starts talking to his father. Uh, his father gives him an idea of becoming uh, academician. He says you could be a teacher, you could be an academician. This guy is no, never in my life will I be an academician because he as a teacher, he, he tells his dad, well I as a student, I've already seen. I mean when he was in his bachelor days, what used to happen is the teacher used to come to the front of the board, write something, turn back. Someone from the back would have already rubbed everything at the whiteboard by the time the teacher was again at the front of the class. So uh, there was a clash of ideologies going on between the father and the son. Every other day the father tried to convince. Every other day the son was so stubborn, he was so adamant that no, I am doing things my way. He starts uh, applying to banks and uh, uh, you know, he has a good score, everything, but probably for a management trainee, his, he was overaged at at some point in time, or probably something, some way or the other, he did not get into that. So now comes the moment of truth. One fine evening, this guy is standing right in front of the mirror. He's talking to himself in the mirror. He says, let me see if I could be a good teacher. He starts, you know, discoursing himself on the subject consumer behavior. He starts giving examples. He starts talking. That's, one, that's when the iron thing strikes, or iron, iron rod strikes on his head, and he says, well, let me try this. He walks up to a college with, with an aim of, you know, teaching the 11, 12 level students, the higher secondary level students, the subject marketing. He goes there. He, has, he runs a presentation. He runs a presentation stating, you know, the logo games and all that. So... He's, the, he, he's doing good there, and uh, the principal calls him. He tells him, well, uh, what you could do is drop down the idea of teaching class 12. I promote you to, you know, teaching the undergrads. And then uh, this guy starts teaching the undergrads. He starts teaching with banking insurance to the BBS level. It was second year probably. And then uh, he moves on as an academician. He moves on six years later. That guy is standing right in front of you at this TED program talking to over 100 students. Thank you so much. Uh, now, after the story, life, you know, we think. I honestly wanted to run the Hard Talk Show. That's a program aired at the BBC. If you've not, please turn on BBC, watch it someday. It's a fantastic program. I wanted to run, run a program called The Larry King Live, you know, something of that sort. I wanted to get into the mass communication. I wanted to do a media studies. But everything is not scheduled as you want it to do, as you want it to be. I know compromises, you know, our society, mokin compromise garni. Compromise naramro. Zoilibani moimatro compromise garni. Our society is of that sort. But see, I have been through a lot. I have been abused. I have been, you know, uh, backbited a number of times. But then I have overcome it slowly because I was always in sync with the change. Let the change come. I will accept it. I will move on. I will move further. Now, as a faculty, you know, technically a faculty or a teacher would be a white kurta pajama, a, a big thick glass, and then a stick in his hand, hitting out all, any Tom, Dick, and Harry he sees in the school. But it's different. 
before I started this show, I was talking to my dad before I even featured in the show. So I was talking to my dad about the education system in Nepal. I mean, my dad has been a very good friend of mine. Uh, he's been always, you know, uh, I think I'm getting emotional, but then he's always been that support wherever I, I've needed, whenever I've wanted, he's always been there. But yes, uh, I was talking to him the other day, and then he was telling me that, well, in our society, we expect the teachers to be something different. The, the college where I was in, the university where I was in, I'm sorry, I just wanted to uh, put up some slides, but then I did not have the original pictures, or else I would have shown you what, what, I, what, what I looked during my university days. I mean, I used to go to the class with a uh, you know, and, and a short. I had a, a mohawk, and then half of it was green, half of it was blue. So I grew up in that, I grew up that way. But then the thing is, Coming to the point, the thing is, a faculty, a teacher, yes, the appearance might change, but the role is the same. You are here to, we are here to spread knowledge. I mean, there's a fine line between student and a faculty, but what I believe is, you need to get into that zone. You need to get into that zone, you need to understand them, rather than, you know, imposing things on, on them. You need to have the wavelength. You need to understand the wavelength between you and your pupil, between you and your student. One. Two examples. I, as a faculty, I've always, you know, prioritized examples to be the benchmark of understanding. Every student might not articulate things properly. But at the end of the day, when he or she understands the concept, and throws back an example at me, that makes me satisfied. That makes me happy. I am putting in efforts so that my pupils, my students understand, right? So the change is always there. I was thinking of coming up on a shorts and a converse and then you know, showing a different side of the faculty, but uh, I dropped the idea last night. I honestly dropped the idea last night that that would not be, that would not be, you know, that would not have been a good idea. Uh, and then, yes, the change is there. We do not accept a guitarist as a teacher. We do not accept, you know, a man with a tattoo in his hand as a teacher. We do not accept someone with a long beard as a teacher. But then, it is the knowledge that you share. It is the consciousness that you spread. I... It's really overwhelming. Thank you so much. I, uh, I was brought up in a religious background. Uh, my school was quite religious. We, you know, we were woken up early in the morning, 4 o'clock. We were pushed to the prayer halls. And then we just sit down and make prayers. Class 8, I went home. There was a Rudri part at home. The Pandit started. I started after the Pandit did. I finished before the Pandit. And this guy was so shocked. It was like this eighth class kid is uh, chanting Rudris. And then, well, that in itself was an achievement back then. But then now I see, I have, you know, I have accumulated the changes. Uh, trust me, I would have been in the band, but that the, I was a former member of the founder member of the band. But the band is already dismantled at this time, in this point in time. My, uh, one of my best friends is in Shillong. The band was covered by the Rolling Stone magazine. In India, right? That's a very prestigious magazine for a band to be covered. And then, uh, now the band is dismantled. My friend is in Shillong, he's doing a business, one of the founder, founder members, and I'm here as a faculty. I'm teaching people. See? That's fun. You need to love what you do. There's no other way out. Back of your head, on the back of your head, have, you know, put a thing there for sure. Whatever happens, happens for good. Whatever happens, happens for you to be stronger. I did not, I just did not give up, you know. The, the last two years after my 11th and 12th were, the, were probably the most toughest years. My dad did not put a TV at home because my track record was bad, obviously. So I was very much into football. 
every Saturday, 8.30 at 103.00 BBC Radio. You come with Saturday Night Live, right? There you listen to commentaries. I had a radio. I bought an earphone. I used to plug in the earphone at the radio and listen to the commentaries. And after every commentary, I used to write down my own article. After every commentary, I used to write down my own article. And thankfully, I mean, I also got a chance to work as an editor at one of the, uh, one of, uh, you know, uh, reputed online companies, Republica Online, which I recently left because of uh, time issues. So I was working there as a desk editor for about a year. So I mean, I've, I've been through a roller coaster ride. I've had so much. I would like to thank each and every student of mine who've always supported me, who've always, you know, who've always been there for me, who've always understood me, and who've always let me understand them. I would like to support. I would like. I would also. I would also like to thank all of the faculties, all of the staff with whom I've worked, with who have always been my support. I mean, it is with us, between the faculties, that we decide, you know. Maybe, just an example, a friend comes to mind and says, you're too lenient, and I, t I tell him, you're too strict. I mean, we discuss and we learn. So this is a very wonderful place to learn. Uh, thank God that we are all here today, present, at any part of the world. We have our vision. We have a thing to do. Let's be honest to ourselves. Let's do whatever we're doing. Uh, let's not wait for the result, you know. The result is due. It definitely will come at one point in time. But be honest to yourself. Stay happy. Thank you. You've been a wonderful audience. Thank you so much. <laughs>